Okay, so the title of this video is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to be taking an analog stick or joystick and putting it inside of an NES controller for mainly two reasons. Uh, number one, most importantly, I want to. It'll be fun. And number two, uh, it's kind of proof of concept for another project I want to make later on down the road. Um, I'm making a small NES arcade system for a friend, and I really want to make it as small as I possibly can so it can fit on a desktop and just look really cool. Uh, but for arcade systems, you need joysticks, and I knew this. I went online and I looked for joysticks, and there was only a few options. Option one was a micro switch joystick, which is really what I wanted to lean towards, but again, they weren't proportionate to the size, so I want to make it as small as I can. And uh, then there were other joysticks that required a microcontroller to read, and I didn't want to go that route. I wanted to keep it pretty much as simple as I can, and I also like to avoid programming because it's a lot more fun. So I was left with um, pretty much just tinkering about with stuff. Uh, I had a Xbox 360 controller um, that I'm no longer using because my wonderful dog chewed the hell out of it. Uh, so I took the two joysticks off of it. Here's one. And then there's a joystick right here uh, on this breadboard. But what I did to it was kind of fun. And uh, I'll show pictures of it, but I won't go into any detail with the video on it because it was just intricate work. I took the potentiometers off the joysticks because that's all the joysticks are, is just two potentiometers, one for horizontal and one for vertical. But I took the potentiometers off the joystick uh, by squeezing these two little white tabs together, and I popped off the, the uh, I guess I can call it the faceplate of the joystick, flipped it over, and I scraped away some conductive material, which pretty much makes it read as a single pulled up without switch. Uh, I scraped away conductive material right at the top, so now when I move the joystick one way or the other, it could throw a voltage or a signal in one of two ways, just like a single pole double throw switch. Um, I'm going to be throwing a voltage in one of the two ways. I'm going to input 5 volts to the center pin, which is the wiper. And if I move the joystick left or right, it'll throw the voltage left or right. Same with vertical, up or down, it'll throw the voltage up or down. And uh, from there we have control. Um, so here are a few pictures of it. I'll put right in the corner of this video. Uh, I just took apart the joysticks, like I said, and scraped away some insulation with a um, razor knife, I think. One of my hobby knives. I don't know the exact bit, but I just scraped it away with a razor knife and uh, put it back together, cleaned it up first, and then put it back together, and it worked fantastically. I just tested it out by inputting a 5 volts, uh, 5 volt into the uh, wiper pin and measuring the output with a multimeter. And uh, I only got 5 volts on one pin at a time, which is really cool. So it's a fun hack, and it worked out really well. Now, on the on my breadboard right here, I have it set up as a visual proof of concept to show you it working. Uh, so let's get a little closer here on this, and then we're going to go to my whiteboard, and I'll give you another visual to hopefully really explain this a lot more. Okay, so here is the circuit close-up. Now, the supply voltage I'll be using for the NES controller is the voltage supplied to the NES controller, uh, which sounds a little back and forth, but the voltage is 5 volts, I think, and that's what I'm using for this setup. Now, I input 5 volts to the wiper of the potentiometer, and it outputs 5 volts on either of the pins you throw it to. Uh, so, if you're familiar with electronics and you're looking at the circuit, you're probably wondering why I have transistors if 5 volts is more than enough to light up these LEDs, which it is, but I use transistors for a few reasons. Uh, I wanted to get the I wanted to get the uh, resistance right on the base of the transistor, and I also wanted to just see the transistors working um, as they would when I implement it into the controller. Uh, so this is a analog stick that I took off the same Xbox 360 controller that I just have soldered to a piece of perf board to really uh, make it more manageable. And here's the other one. Uh, the only thing different with this is that uh, this one the micro switch or the uh, tack switch on it still works. Unlike with this one, uh, I kind of screwed that up when desoldering it. I used a blowtorch to desolder it and it melted the contact just a little bit. So uh, so I might use the tack switch in the final product. I don't know if I will though. I mean, it just might be cool, but I don't know. So uh, I'm going to plug in. I'm just going to use my phone as a power supply. I have a USB cable and a OTG cable I made, so I'm just going to Plug it in that way and get 5 volts to it that way and I'll show you working. So host, so if I move the, uh, wherever I move the joystick, the LED will light up for it. Uh, 
So right here we have a down LED up left and right. And uh, if I move the analog stick up, down, left, or right, the LED in that position will light up. And that's pretty much how it'll work in the controller. So do that right now. Down, that LED lights up. Left, down lights up. Up, that one lights up. And right, that one lights up. Now you can see the uh, down and left and uh, the diagonals lighting up too, because that's, it still works diagonally. So I'll do it a little bit more cleaner. Down, up, right and left. And uh, diagonals work just as well. And yeah, so it's actually really cool and a very simple hack and I'm really thrilled with the outcomes. I didn't think it was going to work so well. But uh, yeah, really cool. So now I'm going to show you it on the whiteboard and hopefully really implement this uh, hack into your brain if you're at all confused because it is really easy. You just pop off the potentiometers and scrape away some conductive material right at the top of it just like the picture showed and you got a pretty much a single pull double throw switch for two of them so you can throw uh potential you can throw voltage in one of two ways or two of four ways if you're take if you're taking consideration both pots at the same time so let's go look at my whiteboard and i'll give you a better or an easier understanding of it and then uh, we're going to move on to the nes controller okay so here is a standard uh symbol or schematic symbol for potentiometers uh, you have two pins on the outside, that is the left and right pin normally for potentiometers. In this case, it is left and right pin for the potentiometers on the uh, analog stick. And you have a center pin, which is called the wiper. Uh, for a basic function of this, you would move the wiper and it would go pretty much along the lines of resistance and select a resistance in between and it will output a higher resistance or a lower resistance depending on where the wiper is. Uh, most cases you use a trimmer as just a variable resistor, kind of like that, but uh, for more detailed projects you use it like this. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm inputting 5 volts into the wiper and I'm gonna be moving it left or right. But I scraped away some conductive material, like I said, so basically I just went like this and just removed a middle portion of it. So now when I move the wiper, it goes left or right and the voltage will go to left or right. Uh, pretty cool, just like a single pole double throw switch, which we have right here. Um, we have a common pin, which is pretty much the wiper in this case, and two uh, output pins on a single pole double throw switch. So it works in the same manner. We have the functionality of a single pole double throw switch or two single pole double throw switches, but the fluidity of an analog stick, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this helped out with explaining it. And uh, I might do a video on how to mod an analog stick. I don't know if I want to though, because it requires me getting really close to the um, potentiometer and it will cover, uh, you won't be able to see anything on the camera, so or in video rather. So. Uh, I might not do that, but I might. All depends, or I might just do like a slideshow of it. But for right now, this is the best I can do. I don't think it's all too confusing once you really think about it and let the information sink in, because it is really simple. Like, I was surprised how simple it was. So we're going to move on to the NES controller now, the Chinese knockoff NES controller, which I'm not too thrilled about. Okay, so I got the NES controller taken apart, and uh, really simple. It's a Chinese knockoff, so the circuit board's a lot smaller, but it works the same because it has to. Uh, and I went ahead and made this little transistor array, but I come to realize it's still too big. My intention was to put it, like, right here, just off, uh, just hanging off this edge right here, but it's just way too big. So what I'm going to do now is just take transistors and place them about on the back of the board and run everything um, pretty much without a circuit board. Just run everything like that. Just freehand soldered, I guess. Be a lot easier. Now would take up less room than this thing. It was a good idea, but just not going to work. So I'm going to do that off camera, and I'll be right back. Also, I'm not going to take this apart because it's just going to be a glop top on the bottom of it, or on the front of it, rather. That much I know. Hmm. Okay, so I got all the transistors soldered up. I'm going to four of them for left, right, up, and down. I even labeled it on the board so I can wire it up easier. Uh, this was easier than using a printed circuit board or a perf board. It took up less space. So, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I have all the emitters of the transistors folded over and tapped into this ground line right here, which is really convenient. And then over here we have 
three of the signals interrupted before they went to the uh, switch, and then over here we have another signal interrupted. Uh, I had to go that far for pretty much two reasons, not to crowd these ones and then the trace ripped. And then I got the analog stick right here, just hot glued in place, the hack analog stick. And the voltage is running through the trimmers, or the wipers on the trimmers, or the potentiometers. Then the output wire is going to the transistors on the back. Pretty simple. So now I'm going to put it back together. Also, I went ahead and routed a circle using my Dremel and the NES controller. That way the analog stick fits. Screw in place. Unless I use 6.8K resistors for the base of the transistors, could probably use a 1K to probably 100K, I'd say. And just the ones I had lying around that worked. I feel like testing a lot, but it works. So I'm going to close up the case, and I'm going to give it a test. Also, this will work with the standard NES controllers that use the 4020 uh, IC. Analog fits nice. So now for a thumbstick. Got this black one from a 360 controller my dog chewed. Just push it right in place. And there we go. Moves nice. And feels nice. So let's test it out. Okay, so I got my NES portable on my desk. Screen's a little dirty, so don't pay too much attention to that. Um, the NES controller right here with the analog stick. Um, now, for for those of you who know, uh, this screen is way too bright for my camera to like really focus on it. So I have this overhead light you can't really see that's going to be focusing on the screen. And uh, when I test it, I'm going to just fast forward to the second level of Mario and hope it's decently dark enough so you guys can see it. So right now I'm just going to power on the console, turn on the Bluetooth, and then I'll flip the switch. And I'll wait for the audio to speed up. There it is. So uh, we're going to test down and up first since we have the option right here. So down on the analog, moves it down. Then up on the analog, moves it up. Up and down, pretty cool. So now I'm gonna turn on the light, and uh, fast forward to the second level. Okay, so we are back. I'm on the second level of Mario. You can kind of see it better. Keep in mind, the screen is a lot better looking in person. My camera's not doing it any justice. So right now we're on the second level of Mario, and I'll test the left and right functions as well as the down, because Mario can crouch now. Uh, but the up you saw working in the previous clip, so so far it's working. So let's uh, get the controller back in frame here. A little bright because of my light. So right works, and left works. And so do all the other buttons, as they should normally. So, um, down works because Mario's crouching, left and right, and uh, there's really nothing to test with up yet. But yeah, the controller itself works and turned out to be a pretty fun hack. Now, I said I was going to do a, uh, I might have done a, I said I was going to do like a follow-up on the potentiometer hack or the analog hack, and I did. I wrote an instructable, the link will be in the description of this video, so if you want to learn more about this or get a better understanding of how I hack the analog stick, be sure to click on that. I've included a few extra photos that I didn't show in this video and I also uh, have it written down I have all I have all the instructions written down on the on the instructable so you can read it over and over again and it's just a lot easier for some people to comprehend when you get to read it and stuff so yeah it's a pretty fun hack uh, I don't think this has ever been done before adding a joystick to a uh, NES controller an actual joystick not like a uh, uh, D-pad joystick like some of them have. This is like an actual joystick that I got off of a Xbox 360 controller, as I'm sure you know because I said it already. So be sure to check out the Instructable for more information on this and uh, 
uh, pretty much more detail on how to do it because that's what the instruction bowl was for. And yeah, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you would like. I'm going to be doing a future project involving this hack for an NES arcade system I want to make. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and enjoy the holidays. I'm making this video on Thanksgiving right now, so kind of fast-paced. But yeah, thanks for watching and uh, have a good one.